Hey guys, this is Andrew Keen from KeenOnTheMarket.com. This is your unusual option activity user guide. So I'm going to be on Keen on the Market right now. And what I do is I go on to the bottom right. Before I can get into market reports, I need to go to the bottom right hand corner and I have to log in. So I'm just going to use my own personal login. Just going to put in my name, put in my password, hit login. Very simple. So before I go to market reports, I have to log in. Now I'm logged in. If I go to the bottom right, <clears throat> it says, hey, Andrew32, you're logged in. Perfect. Now I can look at the market reports that I'm subscribing to. If I want to hit up unusual option activity, that one is free, bring it up. So this is the unusual option activity report from today, August 13th, 2012. So I have a lot of different things. I'm going to go over every section in detail. First section, this is the unusual option activity report. This is hand-selected five trades that I find the most interesting for the day uh, for trade of uh, August 13th, 2012. So I hand-selected these trades for a specific reason. I think these are the most interesting trades. I will keep an eye on these. Group on ahead earnings today. PXP traded 17 times usual volume. As I see trades going across the tape, there's trades and then there's unusual option activities trade. There's probably 25 big ones. I try to select the five that I think are going to help my trading the most. I can use this to calculate daily trading ideas. If a customer is buying puts, I can bring up the chart, see if I want to get bullish or bearish. So this is using unusual option activity. I can think of daily trades based off this. Section A, what it happens in section A. Top volatility increases and decreases. On the left, I have Volatility change increases, and on the right, I have decreases for the day. A lot of times on the right, I'll see stocks that just had earnings. Usually, volatility decreases when we have earnings. Maybe volatility on the left. This is maybe a deal stock, a takeover stock. SWC, I know they bought a bunch of calls today, about 8,000 calls. What happens when calls are bought? The supply demand curve. Volatility goes higher. So this can also help me get trades that I want to put on. This also helps me. If I want to you know, sell high volatility, if I want to buy cheap volatility, increases and decreases in volatility, implied volatility helps my trading plan. Section B, these are top option trades by size. These, I try not to look so much, you know, Microsoft, GE, a lot of these stocks can be hedged against ETF, so I don't necessarily take them. PXP was very, very interested today. Um, so this is top option trades by size. 36,000 lot. This is a big, big order. I flagged one of these in Vodafone, VOD the other day, OC 29 calls, 20,000 of them traded. They hit the unusual option activity report. I bought calls. I got good for a triple in that trade. Next, most active stock options. So this is what is trading the most. A lot of times in here we see X dividend plays. Uh, you know, market makers trying to capture a dividend. You know, a lot of these times these are Microsoft, GE, uh, XLF, SPY. So this is the most active stock options. Next, top changes in open interest. So this is telling me what's changing the most in open interest. So open interest are how many contracts are open right now. If there's a volume that's increasing versus the open interest, this will give me the volume versus the open interest. How many is increasing or decreasing? Changes versus open interest. This is very, very critical. I want to know if people are adding to positions, if they're taking positions off, they're taking profits. So that's a very important. Section E, Bull bearish bias, unusual call put volume ranked by a percentage of ask. This a section I don't use so much, um, but it is interesting sometimes to see how many you know how many of these is being being traded on the offer. What is the volatility? What's the change? What's the multiplier? This section I don't use as much, but a lot of people like to use this. Bull bearish bias. This is ISEE put call sentiment. So this shows me. The sentiment and puts versus calls, as we see in the first one, BBBY. A lot of puts versus calls. Next one. So this shows me my put call sentiment. Opening customer buys. Next one. Largest implied volatility gap changes in the last 30 days versus the private previous session. So what volatility has changed the most, up or down? So this tells me the top five up or down changes. Uh, FMCN, Focus Media, was up a lot today. I'm not sure if they had earnings. Vol was down a lot. OZM, you know, is there a possible takeover? A lot of time volatility gets bid up if it's a possible takeover. H, at the money implied volatility. So this shows me the changes in at the money implied volatility. 
Next, richest and cheapest at the money implied volatility. I look at this one a lot. This gives me daily trading ideas. Group on net earnings at the bell. The implied volatility is 180 versus the historical of 98. Um, so it's a difference of 83% on the bottom. So on the top, we have, you know, implied volatility be very, very, very high against historical. On the bottom, we have historical being very, very cheap against, or implied being very cheap against historical. So on the top, we see maybe stocks are going to have earnings this week. On the bottom, we might see takeover stocks or stocks that just had drug announcements. Halo just probably had a drug announcement. Daily put call sentiment. Um, this shows the, the sentiment. Bearish, neutral, bullish for the whole day. So today, 25% bearish, 50% neutral, 25 bullish. The 22-day moving average is 0.71, um, and today it was 0.47, so a pretty flat day today. Every single one of these sections I can use to help make trades for daily trading ideas. Help me with my trading knowledge. Help me with you know what stocks I might want to trade, daily trading ideas, what stocks I think are good. And this is selected put call ratio, high put versus call ratios. Um, and we have SQNM today. Uh, the put call ratio is 9 here. Uh, PMT was 60 here. So this is unusual option activity report. If I was new to trading, this might be a lot that seems over my head. However, you know, I have to learn. I can sit here and say, hey, maybe I write these trades down. Today, they bought Groupon puts for 20 cents. And the next day, on expiration, is this a winning trade? Maybe PXP. Are they calls they sold a winning trade? So I could just, I used to do this a lot. I used to write down the trades and see, hey, Paper, what is paper anyways? Paper is an order from a hedge fund, mutual fund, retail bank, or big customer. Are these people know what they're talking about? Usually we see a lot of paper, quote unquote, orders. I used to know orders that would trade in certain stocks that were always profitable, and sometimes they were 50-50. We used to have an Apple customer come in that always sell put spreads. He was almost always right. And then we'd have other stocks where it'd be 50-50. Some of these trades are 50-50. Maybe some hedge funds are better at certain st some stocks, but not other stocks. So just writing these trades down. Hey, if I bought these, would this be a winner on expiration? This is Andrew Keen from KeenOnTheMarket.com. This is your unusual option activity user's guide. And I hope you guys use the unusual option activity report on a daily basis. We put this out for free. It takes us a lot of time to compile. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Thanks, and I'll see you in the live trading room.